going to call the meeting to order um, because we are expecting two more commissioners to come. Jim oh, and Karen will be here, but um, we do have a quorum okay. and we have our first applicant Good. is present. So we, um, we have two new applications before we go on to the public hearing that's continuing. Um, and I should add that the public hearing, I'll, I'll state this again later, the, the public hearing on the Amherst um, media application is continuing from August 15th, not from March, as the Daily Gazette, Hampshire Gazette article said. Okay. Uh, they were denied a certificate of appropriateness at the March meeting and then submitted a new application that came before the board for the first, the commission for the first time on August 15th. Okay, um, that's helpful. Yeah. Okay, so um, our first applicant, and again, both the um, both of the items on the the first two items on the agenda are um, properties that we have previously given a certificate of appropriateness to that have some changes, the modifications they're bringing before the commission. So, uh, with that, I'll invite the representative from eighty four Sunset Avenue, and yeah, you can just or is there you can pull up a chair. Or, yeah. Sure. So, and just say, yeah, state who you are. And, yeah. My name is Jesse Sum. Okay. I, and I just said, I'm Jennifer Tao, the chair of the commission. Nice to meet you. Penny Schwartz. Hi, Penny. Mariana. Hi. And I, I am familiar with Mr. Colton. With Bruce Colton, yeah. Okay. Um, so, during the design process and pricing and working with our builder, there's a couple things that have changed. Um, some of them are a step back, um, right. things that would maybe require less review. And, but we wanted to, in the event that you came to the property after it was built, and that's not what right. we approve. We kind we of keep you in the loop. That. Yeah. Um, so the easy ones are the roof. It is possible we're looking at it, potentially doing asphalt for the roof, which wouldn't require um, approval. I believe, just for a cost-saving measure. Uh, we're still hoping to do metal, but I wanted to just let you know that could happen, not to be surprised. And then you'll be in touch with the town in terms of if whatever material you approve, yeah. if it needs to come before us. You will. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, the porch and deck to the south, which we were originally going to remove and rebuild slightly larger, we're just going to refurbish it, so it's going to have the same hipped roof, the same shape, um, and we're looking at some other window manufacturers. So it would be the windows would appear the same, but it might be a different manufacturer, but it would have the same mulling pattern and uh, simulated divided vice. Uh, but going to a true double hung as opposed to a tilt turn. So again, kind of more in keeping with the standards as far than less. And then the only other one is there's two windows on the east elevation that are uh, higher windows that, you, that this is how it appears now yes right. and mm -hmm. we're proposing that the new windows rather than be the exact size and shape of those match the pair to the south and we're kind of presenting is that these are well, I guess we oh, call so de minimis yes. changes right. and that we would continue on and I would send Nate uh, updated elevations to reflect what I just told you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yes. you have a question? So, uh, maybe this is for Nate, but uh, Nate, it's, uh, I guess it's not for the building commission to make the decision about de minimis changes, is that correct? But it's, it's for us to make that decision, or right. why can't the building commissioner make that decision? He wanted to hire <coughs> on the commission. So, you know, the question would be, is this de minimis enough so it doesn't need a new application public hearing? And to move forward, or you know, would it require a you know new application? Okay. Uh, so that so we uh, that's our job. That's here. a job. Yeah, when we're yes. deliberating. Yes. Do you have a question? Uh, it seems de minimis to me. It seems yes. Oh, pretty, I agree. It seems yeah, pretty minimal. I, I and I really I appreciate your bringing in such yeah. clear representations of what you had proposed and what you're now proposing. Yeah. And my personal opinion is that I think it actually lends a nicer appearance having it match the windows on the other side. We think so too. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. Um, okay, so if there are 
Right, because it's more keeping it. If it was that way to begin with, they might not have had to come here in the first place. Changing the size of the windows is threatens not to be. Oh yeah, I agree. It's not. So, so we should be. I, I, I think it's a preferable change. Yes. Right, but I think it should come before the commission. Absolutely. I do, but, okay. but I'm so. I just want to be clear here right. without wanting to get my head too stuck into any legal protocol or anything because I don't like that part of the world. Um, that we are choosing not a de minimis change, but what we think is a preferable change. Now, can we do that? Yes, I, so I think that this would always come before us. I think if they weren't the doing anything else but yes. were changing the windows, it would have to come before the commission. But the other changes yes. would not. So, but we can do this without a public hearing. So right, so we're saying it's, they've already had to apply for a certificate. And that so, we've granted. Right, and so the question is, can this be de minimis enough that it is, you know, They don't have to reapply. In the context of all the other changes. Right. I mean, I, I, I think I agree, but I just want to make sure that sure. I'm not uh, I don't want to set some precedent here. That I don't think it sets a precedent because we can change things um, in the forward direction as opposed to the back. No, I agree. I mean, my thought would be if they were coming and they're changing all the windows, right? We're going to make change all the windows won't be proved. That's one thing, but to make them match what is, is existing yes. and has and been approved. And that's been approved. Well, I think yeah. I've done enough here to make yeah. sure we're paying attention. Right. I just have one question. So the larger windows are the ones uh, here. On the yes, yes. Yeah, see the correct. original ones up yes, here. Yes, I see them. And they're going to go to match the ones on the other side of the doorway. Okay. Yes. yes. And I think that's an improvement. Yeah. Actually. Yes. Oh. Yeah. And, we've, and since yes. I sent that to Nate, we we put together a little elevation. Oh, that's, that's yeah, I think that looks for lovely. record, and we'll send that in. Oh, that's okay. very helpful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. To, uh, for yes, good. To show yes. that. So that's an improvement. I like that. Yes. Thank you. So with that, um, can we move? To close the, um, mm -hmm. I think we'll just motion to. We we'll just we don't accept the changes. Is it continuing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, accept uh, okay. Move to regard the uh, changes uh, as submitted by the architects as the minimum changes to the already uh, approved certificate of Second. appropriateness. Second motion. All in favor? Yes. Yes. So approved. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank Good you luck. Very much. You guys have a lot okay. To do yeah. Best of luck. <laughs> and you want to get out of here. Yes. yes. Oh, you As you say. should. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, and do we have uh, the next app? Um, also, again, this is um, we've issued a certificate of appropriateness for the um, for the refurbishments at 148 Lincoln Avenue, but their representative. Is the representative for 148 Lincoln here? You know, I, I, I haven't emailed earlier today. I haven't heard, heard anything. Huh. So do you think maybe they decided not to make the changes? Because I know there was... You would yeah, I said they even if you weren't going to make the changes to let me know, just so we, we could... Um, well, the next item is not on the agenda until 4 o'clock. So, so we do we... I think so it's three even, minutes up. Yeah. Even, well, even without the um, applicant for 148 Lincoln, you can make the presentation. Yeah. You know, okay. you know, the homeowners, you know, they came to update the um, appearance of 148 Lincoln, right? So they're going to replace the gutters, extend the back porch, and do some changes. And it was this, um, actually. I don't know if you remember. Mm -hmm. yes. 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 Oh, you have it there. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So you know what? Sorry, you know what? The applicant now is requesting that they may need to not. Um, reuse or replicate the porch okay. posts and okay. all the detailing, but yeah. you know, replace the posts and the newel posts and the balusters with something that's different. And you know, I told him that in the discussion we talked about this a lot about that that detail was important, and we even say it in the certificate will reuse or match. And so, you know, he you know they're before you to see is this the minimus enough or is this much of a you know, such a big change that even if they were going to make this, we'd ask them to submit a new application. So, you know, without the applicant here, the commission could say, well, if they propose to make these change, right, those So there, this picture shows the contrast right. between old and new. Yes. Yeah, and remember, 
uh, when I print the, 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 the motion. So this, the next page the is next a picture page. of someone right. This is the old one. It's That's the old one, right. And this is the new one. Yeah. Um, oh, I see, yeah. So this is the old Am I missing one? Go, go another page. It's that. And there you are. Oh, there's the new one. There you are. Next yes. to each other. Okay. Yes. Karen. Yeah. Um, I recall when I uh, made the motion, or began the motion to uh, grant a certificate of approve appropriateness here, I had the word exactly match, yeah. and we decided to take exactly out. But I think you could tell from that that I was um, pleased that they were heading towards an exact match, and the, uh, the contrast between these two here I personally find uh, rather significant. I would agree. And uh, I, would, um, I would need to be convinced that uh, this was match enough for mm -hmm. the intent of our... I agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I think if the commission thinks it's you know, enough of a change that we would say that and we would ask, you know, if they were to do this to file a new application, yes. we would have to go through a hearing process again. Yes. So, it's well, it's that, a real style change. I think change. it's a real style change. Is because this really is a historic thing, and this is something from um, Home Depot or whatever. Well, you know that. Uh, 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 no, uh, it's, Brusco. it's. I mean, it's it's a it's a, a modern replication right. of yes. the style, but it's not original, and it's not as it's not as it's not as chunky a turn. This is. This is a, a square post that's oh, had a little bit of whittling mm -hmm. out of yes. it. Yes, I mean, I, this guy really has mm -hmm. been a, is, yes. a, is a turned uh, post with, with character say, that you can see from forty or fifty feet. You can see mm -hmm. the difference between these two. Yeah, particularly no, I drive by this house several times a day, mm. and that's what lends it. It, 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 it's, it really lends it character and charm. It would look like a very different facade without that. Mm. So can they replace? Can they? Re replicate the other one? Why, why did they go for a change? I guess they were finding it, their, the contractor found it difficult or didn't want to, or maybe costly. So, you know, what I, what I need to tell the applicant is that it can look like it, but it doesn't have to be an exact replication. So, you know, the original ones may be notched and made in a way where, you know, now you could make the, some of the detail and you could attach them, you know, mechanically fasten it, but it doesn't have to be one piece of wood, for instance, that's been mm -hmm. carved up. So there's ways to replicate the appearance and not replicate the mm -hmm. construction method. Right. Um, Which yeah. is probably not prohibitive. Right. right. Yes, Marianne? Yes, so, I mean, f for the record, as we provide feedback to them for why we think uh, that we can't go forward with their application. Or we request that they submit a new application. Application, okay, so that's language. But I, but I have several pieces of feedback. One is that we would want something that does closely enough resemble the existing that it is in that style. And what they're proposing is a very, very different style. And the second thing I would want to see would be whatever, if, if the replacement was visually different enough from what they have here, they would need to replace all of them. Yeah. Yeah, they, will. they would need to have them matched. Okay, yeah. Good point. Have, uh, I mean, they're not here, but a question that would be asked if they were, I think, is have they uh, trolled the uh, salvage places to uh, find something that is uh, <laughs> Of that period, it's yes. uh, equivalently dramatic in yes. return. I mean, it may not have the central piece here, mm -hmm. but it, 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 these are um, the molding is clearly distinguishable. The profile of the molding is clearly yeah. distinguishable from quite a distance, and I think that ought to be the standard right. that we apply. I would also have the question I can see where there's dry rot going across here. Yes, you can't tell from the picture that the that, that the post particularly the decorative part, is actually damaged. I mean, it may or may not be, but if it's not, could it be used? I guess, you know, one, right. one can, the dry rock going across the beam can be replaced without doing away with the hole. Yeah, they may, they were reading Killer. with us, uh, crafts, another craftsman this weekend, so they maybe they are trying, they're still trying to find a way to do it, but um, I think, you know, it seems like the commission has an opinion. We can make a motion and then move on. Yeah, okay. Is there a motion? 
Uh, Bruce is so much better at wording than I am. Well, why don't we? Uh, um, I mean, the, the, move the, the, to uh, yeah. move to to uh, to uh, resolve the question asked by the applicant of uh, 148 Lincoln Street uh, that the proposed uh, change to the um, porch posts is not is not regarded by the commission as a de minimis change. Uh, second. Second. And that we have some suggestions, as you've noted. Yeah. All in favor? <coughs> uh, aye. Thank you. And maybe that they're not here means they've decided yeah. not to go ahead with that. Okay. We're not too far behind. We have all of our members that are going to be present today here. Okay. And um, so with that, we will move on to, um, you know, continue our continuation of um, considering the application for the certificate um, at uh, 14B-251 and 14B-250 um, Main Street at Amherst uh, Media application. And um, I, I did, I mentioned this at the beginning of the meeting, but everyone wasn't here. I just uh, did want to voice a, um, or note a correction to the uh, Daily Hampshire Gazette article that came out a couple of days after our last meeting that actually this public hearing, this hasn't been continued since March, that Amherst Media submitted an application in March and the certificate of appropriateness was not granted, so they, resubmit, they submitted a new application and we opened up that hearing on August 15th, so it's being continued from August 15th, not, not, from, not from March. And um, I uh, want to acknowledge the, we did, uh, the receipt of the letters that um, came um, voicing support and, uh, and uh, both for and against granting the certificate of appropriateness, um, that we read all those letters and, uh, you know, consider them with, you know, take them very seriously. And I, so I did want to reiterate, because I, it came up you know, several times last week um, for everyone that's here as well as for the commission. I don't really need to, you know, uh, restate this for the commission, but I just wanted on the record that um, the commission, you know, certainly um, acknowledges that we are not permitted to take into consideration the mission of the applicant, that the local historic district commission is only authorized to determine, quote, the appropriateness of the scale, shape, and proportions of the proposed building or structure, both in relation to the land upon which it is situated and in relation to the buildings and structures in the vicinity, that the bylaw also states that the commission, that we can consider, quote, the historic and architectural value and significance of the site, building, or structure, the general design, proportions, detailing, mass, arrangement, texture, and material of the exterior um, architectural features involved, and the relation of these exterior architectural features to similar buildings and structures in the surrounding area, and then how it supports the overall um, integrity of the, in this case, would be the Dickinson Local Historic um, District. And we really, we cannot take any other factors into consideration or make any exceptions, so to speak, because we support the mission of the organization that's submitting the application if, um, well, it's not our mandate. And we, you know, acknowledge that the building will exist on the site um, long after a particular occupant does. And so I think for, the meeting today, we would like to ask the applicant if they have any new information that they, you know, want to present to the commission, and then we will ask questions, and then we'll deliberate amongst ourselves. And one of the, que the items we'll be deliberating is whether we feel that we're ready to take a vote, you know, on the certificate, or if we want to request um, additional changes. But that we, you know. We might want to vote today, we might decide not to, but that's, and we would like to, um, we can. Six. Yeah, <laughs> adjourn the meeting at six, thank you. So um, is there, would Amherst Media uh, like to present any additional I think, uh, information? Oh, maybe that Ed's here. Uh, I'm Bill Gillen, I'm the architect. Okay, you, if you want to sit, and, you, uh, you could use the microphone if you'd like. 
there were uh, an issue of the mound, which was uh, greatly concerning. And uh, our civil engineer reported to me today that he can he can do the drainage with a one foot rise in the surface of the slope, not a level, but just simply a one foot rise. Will uh, he can he can do it? So that's one piece of information. Right. I, I suspect you. the mound question. I hope it's gone away. Just a point of clarification, because I want to make sure we all understand what Bill said. So I think whereas the slope was like this and, and the mound was a horizontal out, hitting the slope there, coming out four or five feet down here before it went like that. So Bill, what you're talking about, one foot, is a one foot difference like that. Is that correct? Yes. Is that what you're talking That's about? That's true. Okay. So if it slope up as long, just won't exceed a foot? Right. But it would then slope into the actual rise of yeah. the hillside? It would blend in. It yeah. would, but, uh, but as the hillside slopes more than a foot at some point, it would essentially meet the rise of the, the natural rise of the hillside. Or would it drop down again? I'm trying to visualize. It would I, it'd probably be a levelish area there, okay. or maybe it would be less than a foot up so there. So it wouldn't go up and guess. down. It would just but go in, up. In, go, go, in, right. Instead of being a horizontal platform like this, it would be a, a bleak platform to follow the contour. Okay. That's, that's what I understood. Okay. Thank you. Please. Yes. <clears throat> now, the other thing was that you, uh, uh, Nate, reported that several of you wanted to see uh, a drawing which would show the building in the site. So uh, <clears throat> I immediately got on a phone and looked up 3D companies that do this. This is a specialty, special business. And I grabbed one that had a 617 phone number. However, when I talked to the very articulate woman on the other side, she said she was in the Netherlands. <laughs> <laughs> and it was all perfectly doable. She sent me a proposal of $580 to, to, do, to set this building in the landscape, but there's no way she could have it by today. So we did one, probably cost several thousand dollars, but we'll eat that. <laughs> uh, and so here's one that we have. You've done. You have several. And there's a copy for everyone, I think. Oh, thank you. So thank you very, very much. Helpful. Thank you. Thank you. And then while we're at it, Carol, who was working on the yeah, program, uh, she decided to spin it around and come up with a, a uh, <clears throat> so just to compare that with another scheme. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't get these done yeah. until late today. Thank you. But here's another okay. scheme. Which we do by, once we have the building in 3D, it, it was fairly easy for Carol to flip it around 180 degrees and say, I think we could do this, and I agree with her. With the higher end on Gray Street. Yeah, so yeah. Because right. we had recommended <clears throat> that as a possibility. You must have put it, she heard you. I don't Thank know. you. So yes, we have copies. Thank you so much. Yeah. So okay. then you have different windows facing yes, west. Yes, you do, yes. Yeah. But we don't see the windows on the east, uh, would the windows on the eastern side be these, the ones that are currently there? Uh, that's. That's all I know at the moment. All right. we will, we will yeah. have to. You'd have to go into that. Too. I would, you know, if we had some kind of a straw vote again that gave us yes. some indication yes. yeah. that you were supporting us mm -hmm. and we would have liked the cooking yes. a little bit more. Yes. And yes, and we've said that before. Yes. Yeah. But I don't know. That, that letter from the lawyer was pretty horrible to read. Just reiterating the regulations. Oh. Anyway, that was my impression. I like it better. So, um, just to talk further about this. So, I just want to clarify though, but we don't have any new, I mean, this would just be it, right? So we don't have any uh, plan or anything showing this change. It would just Same be, plan. Well, oh, really? 
this is a you just flip the thing flip from that way to that way. But there's no more, yeah. but there's no more detail on, but maybe you know in terms of like other drawings. I just want to. We yeah. don't have a drawing, so we just came up with the idea about an hour ago. So yeah, I took wow. pictures of it, and I'm gonna try to email myself and throw them up on the screen for the audience. Mm -hmm. Not good. Uh, so is it? Um, are the two wings still recessed in the same way? Uh, no, uh, with this with this scheme, the big one is down the corner, and the smaller one, the office building section, is on the west end. And as being on the west end, in order to fit the parking, yes. it has to, it can't give it, yes. we can't give you the 26 the feet yes. setback, which we have, so and it has to come like out this? because we've got a, yeah. a block of 14 cars hidden behind so all of that. Is that the so That's how the far setback this, is it? This is the, this is a five feet? Five, six feet or something like that. Yeah. 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 Yes. <clears throat> um, so we've this lost the fact that it's recessed, but we've turned it around. We've lost the fact that it was recessed, but we've turned it around. Yeah. Questions? Yes, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm sorry. Mary That's all right, yeah. yes. Um, I have a process question and a substantive yeah. question. Well, so I guess first with the process, were there, I wanted to let you present your yeah, full presentation. But that's relevant, I think, to what okay. Bill is saying, because uh, Mr. Gillen is saying, because no, I think fine. that's I know, but we try to be formal here. <laughs> uh, we try. Um, I, 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 there was a little crosstalk with Mr. Gillen and myself about the point at which we'd come in with detail of windows and the frames and the kind of windows and a lot of detail. I, I would like to propose that we understand, it's my hope, that we're talking right now about the big picture, about the actual, the mass, the location, all the issues that, that, that are not yet in detail. And my proposal would be that we need to deal with those before possibly in a subsequent meeting if things do go forward. We talk about the detail of the, of the windows and the. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Malloy thinks that's appropriate, but I find I get confused when I go back and forth between the detail and the bigger picture. Yeah, I guess, and we're getting off. We're getting into a discussion here. Okay. Because to me, they kind of fuse. All right. It's hard for me to separate right. one from the other, but I'll get into that okay. later. But go on. Yeah. Yes. Um, but do you have any other? It, I forgot. No. <laughs> so this is what you want to present today. This is the new information, which we really appreciate. This is. Well, we just got the idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I right. could have talked for hours about the other scheme. Right. No, but I just wanted to. Because um, <laughs> procedurally, we should let you make the presentation, and then we ask questions. And so I didn't. But we don't like to as, ask you questions before you're finished. Marianne with the presentation. was saying, uh, this is the big picture. This is the mass massing, which we we would like to get that established so that we can get into the detail. We'd love to get into the detail, but yeah, it's inappropriate. Okay. Right. Just as the, the civil engineer didn't get into great detail mm -hmm. over that drainage thing until he's been told, yeah, if we're going to do it, then he'll do the full-blown engineering. Right. Can we now ask questions of Mr. Gill? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So my first question will have to do with, uh, I did not, um, think that the three small windows that one saw from Triangle Street <coughs> were a useful facade for people driving along Triangle Street looking back. So I want, would want to know what your plan was, this is question number one, about now that you've flipped them, if we think that's a good idea, what the facade along Gray Street would be. So that's one question. A second question is that uh, you said that once the two buildings are flipped that you can't set back what it now becomes the West Wing and I would like to question that because um, I have not appreciated a flat facade along Main Street. It, it, oh, it's still Okay, but, but the drawing doesn't represent that, so that I think that we would need to see. No, you're right. You're right. The drawing does no, no. make it look like a flat facade. Uh, what, it's also. What is it? I, I'm 
It's as you see. It's, I mean, as it's you see. not that one wing is, is set, set back, back further right. than the other. Okay. So it's the whole facade is now five feet from the It's sidewalk. not like this. Yes, exactly. This guy has come forward. Yes. So I, I would want to ask the architects if they could consider uh, going back to the idea of a recessed west wing. And that also then means that what you had had before, as an entrance, a, a, a Main Street entrance that had some interest, but that needed more work as it was set back, uh, now there's a whole new set of stairs leading down to the sidewalk, and the um, the accessibility of the sloped entrance that you had previously is lost. So I find previously that what? that you had had previously. Yes, that would be the same. OK. Just that when she flips it, you had the curving sidewalk was a long yes. place. But yes. We didn't get a chance to. Yes. And it. then my final so question, still, yes. Yeah. yes, that my final question for the engineer is I would still like to see the septic system moved closer to the east. I don't like sitting, even though it may just be a one foot entrance, I don't like it right in the front of the view up to the Hills House. And so I would like a consideration of what the drainage implications would be if he would move it closer to the east, if he would move it closer to that very attractive tree line so that it might even be incorporated into the tree line would not interrupt the the vista to the Hills House. This vista here. Yes. Yeah. So those are some of my initial concerns about this, some of which might be substantive. Yeah. Well, the trees are not on our property, so I can't move it up here. I'm, I'm not concerned about the trees. I'm concerned about the septic system. It's a, or it's or the drainage system. system. Yeah. Drainage. Yeah. Yeah. Infiltration yeah. system. An well. infiltration okay. system. Well, yeah. well what, I hear you, what I think you're saying is that Move, move it, it to the easterly. east as far as you can. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. No problem. Right. Yes. I think I have to talk with. We'd have to talk with her. Yes. So, yeah. and, and, and so, Bill, you're saying there's no way to push the building back further because of the parking. You have to get those parking. There's no way to. Make yeah. It. If we, the, the parking is 60 feet, 20 feet, 20 feet, 20 feet, and uh, that locks us in if we're going to get uh, the 14. Excuse me, uh, if I may speak yeah. to my, my co-commissioner. Uh, it's not a matter of law that they have all of those parking slots. It is possible to get a waiver from the planning board to have fewer parking slots. And my argument there would be that since there is accessible bus service, that fewer parking lots, parking slots would make it possible to move the entire structure to the east. Or so I guess I would add no, that. No, no, wouldn't that need to be to the house to the to the north, to the north. so that it was set okay. back? Okay. And yes. I, I mean, okay. So maybe the question is, how many spaces would have to be sacrificed to move it? Let's say twenty feet from the sidewalk. I mean, you may not be able to answer I that. I think off the it top might be head. six, but. Uh, I don't know who has the authority. I don't know whether the planning board. The planning board. Planning board you, has. The is that a public it? hearing? Is that true? Yeah, but I think it's a little both. I think if the historic district commission says that we want a certain setback, the you know the bylaw says the commission has the ability to impose setbacks, and then you know it becomes a discussion between the planning board and local historic districts in terms of what you know what works. So the planning board can issue a waiver too, and so if the commission says we're not going to approve it unless it has a setback, then. You know, the planning board will say, okay, well, how does that work with the rest of, you know, their review? I don't, I mean, it hasn't come up that, you know, there's been, you know, something like this where there's a disagreement over setback. Uh, Is there? Who's, who's disagreeing? Well, I'm saying, like, if the, for instance, if the, if the commission says, we want you to get rid of six parking spaces mm -hmm. and move the building back, and then you go to the planning board, if you're approved, and the planning board says, well, you required 14 spaces, we're not going to let you have less than 10 then you know there's a conundrum that mm -hmm. what's the right path forward so I'm just saying that can make it. you know there could be something if the yes. Commission is like we really need this setback we don't yes. want it five feet from the street that's yes. not appropriate then you have to come up with what's a solution in terms of you know is there off off-site parking that would work if you went to the planning board is there 
you know, like Morgan said, public transportation, what are our alternatives that you could bring that would, you know, work with the planning board if, you know, local sort district wouldn't approve it otherwise. And that's just... And I think... Uh, we'll have public comment. We'll have... To one of the two boards is much more agreeable to waiving the parking. I think it's the planning board. Is that true? Does there, he has a request. I mean, how about the history of getting them Mike, to agree? Yes. Is that is it common for uh, them? Do you to want do the microphone? That? They often. Um, and, uh, one one moment. Want? We have a request from the public. I'd like to request that the images be circulated so that the people yes. 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 yeah, can see them. I was trying to bring them up online. And, uh, and can you I hear what's being be. said? Microphone yeah. is to you. Can you I'll send them for you. Yeah. Yes, we only have the images that we were provided with, so we we'll need to give you our images. Thank you. Yeah, we didn't. Well, we didn't you, receive these beforehand. Like? Uh, uh, they want both images. Nate, if I okay. took a photograph of these and emailed them to you, would you well, be able? I've to already done that to myself, but I'm okay. having trouble accessing my account right now. Could you do without yours for the moment? Sure, Thank absolutely. Yeah. You do. Okay, so. Um, the old ones. I mean, wait, these are the old, is the, an old and the new, which is which? This is the. I can't tell. Is the which one you They're this all. Is, this oh, is, by the windows. This is these the are the old with the small. Oh, that's the new. new. Okay. Right. Yep. Yes. This is old. Sorry, we'll just have to remember them. Here you go. Oh, we've got a few here. <laughs> yeah, this will be okay. Yeah, but I've talked with my uh, the, our clients about the parking, and the, the, our parking was totally driven by the bylaw, and uh, they could. It wasn't an issue. They were pretty flexible about that. Okay, well, that's good to know. And, and so there would be a it, excuse me. Yeah. In, in that case, there would be a memorandum from us to the planning board, suggesting w uh, why we were making this recommendation. Oh, we don't want them up on there. Yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> No, I mean, I think, <laughs> right, there'd be, a, you know, there'd be a discussion with yeah, the planning board of why there was a certain yeah. setback or, you know, mm -hmm. what, of why the rationale between, for that. Yes. And that conversation would happen before we would, <clears throat> it might happen before we could issue a certificate one way or No, I think we no. could, no, we could offer the certificate. But the say it has to have, the condition the, is the yes. setback has to be right. extra wide. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, are there any other questions of the applicant? Um, uh, I, I don't know how to ask this question. Uh, I, we had suggested the idea of flipping several meetings ago, and it seems an interesting one. But I, not but, and I would want myself to go back to Gray Street to imagine what impact the increased height of the roof would have in that stately progression of houses down Gray Street because it's lower than all of them. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, but what about the mass of that of the studio that is required by the studio? Well, that still is only a story and a half. It's twenty six feet. Okay. And, okay. And the building next door is like thirty two. Okay, thank you. And it's further up the hill. Because so they're two story higher. buildings. Yes. Right. We're only yes. a story and a half. Yes, I know, but story and a half can be as big in, at sometimes as a two story building. Yeah, it's a 50 foot across, not 28 or 30. Yeah. <coughs> Are there any other questions? Uh, yes. Excuse me. I, 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 I think we're just saying that the details about the facade windows, etc. we would be getting to today or we would be coming well, to what we're, pardon? I guess the way I saw it is we would, you know, after when we go into our deliberation, then we would each have a chance to say what, okay. you know, our concern is or where we stand and that would be thank probably you. the time. Okay, thank you. Because I know for myself, I, this is maybe out of order, I should say this when we're deliberating, but I couldn't vote to approve without knowing yes. the, the details. Yes. Because I don't but we, get we into would that more later. We would have sense if we agreed either with what Mr. Gillen has presented or with his assuring us that the things we say we're still concerned with, he will be able to address. 
then we could presumably authorize him to go forward. We could go forward, but we and wouldn't we have would voted no, yet. And we would not have voted a final authorization yet, or right. appropriateness right. yet. And that we can yeah. decide when they... Okay. <laughs> I, have, I have a question. When you, when you were considering the whole thing, did you also consider the possibility of matching Gray Street in height, moving it that way, and then doing two floors and, and making less of a... Two floors is a half million dollar elevator project. So we, we so absolutely cost. can't put an elevator in. I see. Not if the public is invited. And in for a nonprofit, everybody's the public. Everyone volunteers, it's the public. And you can't do a ramp that would be. Oh. <laughs> no, I, I, the so cost of an elevator has gone up substantially since I stopped practicing, Billy. Are you serious about that number? Well, I know it's a big number. and I It's know a it, big number when. And it's a continuing expense. Yes, expense and yes. It's a service contract and inspections. And, oh, it's a nightmare. Well, I mean, I think though, so, you know, the commission, you know, I think if you say no to an elevator, we'd want, you know, I would request that we have more information in terms of what is the cost and is it required? You know, if there are private offices upstairs and the public's not allowed, then you don't have to have an elevator. I'd want to verify with the building commissioner what is required in terms of access. I mean, it is. You're wrong. Well, it's the, it's the best practice, but, I, you know, I just would want to verify. No, I think the only way, because I've been there, the only way you can have offices upstairs without an elevator is if there is no, and no means zero, zero visit, public visitation right. no, I mean, in the course of the year. Yeah. And so that would have to be the uh, standard. Just, just want to be clear about that. Yeah, I mean, it's been done before with other buildings where they'll say they have to set aside a conference room on the first floor and everyone has to meet downstairs. No, it's federal. That's not, that's not a 521 state. Um, well, I just, I would We're much more strict than that. I'd want to verify just to make sure. What, so that we could build two floors? Well, does anyone else want it to be two floors? Well, it was asked, and so I just want to make sure uh, we... Uh, from my point of view, uh, it would not uh, remove the Gray Street symmetry, and it would achieve a smaller west wing, which I have always been in favor of. I would certainly wouldn't be good for their operation to have some of their folks upstairs and downstairs. They really need to be all on one level to do their to do their industry. I think, I think Bill, that the, the position that. Is taking we, we need to the, project so that people can, in the back row, can hear us. It's going to be yeah, hard for me to project cold. tonight. I'm sorry. I, I, I would be in bed. Up. If you want to hear me and you can't, you've got to come closer because <laughs> I'm only here <laughs> instead of lying in my bed because of this damn yeah. application. I would have stayed at home for any of the other applications <laughs> that we've had in the past two years. <coughs> Where was I? Oh, oh, right. addressing the second, um, second floor. It's important that we understand that what's convenient and good for the applicant is not our priority. Right. You know, I, I, if that was important well to the applicant, um, that they had to have a large footprint covering, um, they might have wanted to be a little careful, more careful about the site they choose, perhaps. I'm just suggesting that's a, that's a potential well, consideration. More cons uh, 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 I think one of the problems uh, of this uh, proposal is the, the volume. You've heard me on this last week. Mm -hmm. I think the volume is the problem. The scale, it translates to scale, and if they, uh, wherever we are here on our 8.2, uh, we have to consider the appropriateness of the scale, and there's a whole bunch of other things. But I just, I just come to grief with scale because it's it's not appropriate as a scale. It might be more appropriate as a scale if it were consolidated, blocked up, and pushed to the back so that the so it was further up Gray Street. And um, but we would have to see that. And uh, and I did also ask Nate, I think I'm uh, that we should we should make sure that if we have new these kind of projects in the future that there has to be three-dimensional modeling involved, so you can automatically project uh, fly-arounds or multiple views very quickly of, uh, of what the thing looks, because you can see that we're a commission that is, is, is greatly challenged by, by being able to see things. 
uh, I mean, visualize things three dimensionally in relation to the side slopes and and adjust and adjacent buildings. And there is um, architectural software that's routinely used nowadays that does does model. That's what you do. You model it. You don't draft it. You model it. And then what flows from that is an automatic. Well, it's not. It's well, theoretically automatic capability to project three dimensionally from any aspect. And and then um, you know we would be able to make uh, judgments. Um, judgments about the visual impact of this building from various aspects, as we would be able to compare it with what it might look like if it had a flat roof or if it was two story and pushed to the back. And I think that that's what we need. And I'm I'm. Um, I'm going to, uh, at some point, I will move to deny, um, based on the finding, that scale is inappropriate. But well, I would, um, before yeah. we do that, I would invite the applicants to submit some alternative uh, propositions in terms of s scale and, and You mean form. scaled drawings? No, I mean, I mean, uh, so it's spread yeah, on more, the more, more visual yes. studies of some sort. I mean, I, I'm, uh, I can visualize this fairly easily, yes. but I, I, I think I know from our last meeting that the mo most of the rest of you can't, and that's a problem. That's a real problem. I also know that current technology, which has been available for more than 30 years, my office has been using it for more than 30 years, so I know what I'm talking about, can generate this kind of three-dimensional projection that is that would make our job so much easier, okay. Okay. So and it frustrates me that we aren't yeah, there. Yeah, thank you. But I would, um, guess I'd like to, if yes. we don't have any more questions of the applicant, to close the public portion of the meeting so that we can deliberate. Yes. Well, if we close the public hearing, no, no, no. we can't accept. Uh, oh, that we can't ask questions. Then, okay. Yeah. No, just, if we think if the commission thinks they want to go this route and request more information, then we can keep the public hearing open. Yes. And continued again. I mean, at some point, we're going to have to we're going to have to yes. make a determination. Either are we going to continue the conversation and run the same application for a long time, or say here are the reasons why we like it or don't like it, and either issue a certificate or deny it. And so, you know, you know, I provided a memo to the commission. There's copies on the back table, and you know, it offered a lot of suggestions and recommendations to the yes. commission in terms of how to approach it. And so, you know, I think. Um, you know, what I'd like to hear is, I'm hearing some of it today, you know, an explanation of how this does or doesn't meet the criteria, and I just, you know, we've asked the applicant now a few times to come back with different concepts and more information, and so the question is, are we going to continue to do that and keep it as the same application, or make a determination on what's been presented? And so, you know, I just want to make sure that, um, you know, Bruce, because, uh, Bill, what Bruce said, you know, do we have multiple concepts? And if the answer is like, well, you're just going to refine the one that's been submitted, the new one, is that enough for the commission to say yes? Are we going to ask Bill to go ahead and do architectural drawings and go through the whole effort? Or do we still want to have backup even more and have, you know, different concepts presented, which was asked, you know, at the first hearing? Do we still want to have a discussion about what's appropriate in terms of mass, scale, and volume? And so I just want to make sure the commission, I mean, I kind of agree with Maureen that let's take that step back and say, okay, are we ready to even go down to look at the details of this design or are we not there yet? And so that's something I want the commission yeah, to discuss. Yes, I, I because, agree. Because otherwise, we're not providing guidance to the applicant right now. You know, we've offered some, I think some information, some, some guidance, but we're not clear on, is this enough to say, yes, move forward, we like right. where you're going, or are we still at the question of do we need different types of massing, proportion. Um. But I think some of it is, um, we kind of go in circles because now, okay, so we have a different variation on the design, which was we had expressed concern about the west wing, so now the building could be flipped, and so we'd have less mass on the west side. But then we get back to, we lose the setback, and I know, well, like not. for me, that was a deal breaker, having yeah. it five feet from the sidewalk, so then, so, if it's always, yes. sometimes there's a feeling of, uh, you know, one foot forward, two feet back. I and mean, we could do that. That's, I, I suspect we could do it. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. And then, you know, part yes. of my concern, and this gets to be the whole style of the building, so it's not just the details, but when I see, you know, like this, this is what we had before today, this was the most detailed yes. drawing that we had. 
And as I've been driving around the last week, and I had said, you know, last week I ex expressed my concern that the devil's in the details, that, you know, that really is what makes the building. Is it in terms of this, you know, in relation to the bylaw, is it the, have the style and the sophistication and the charm? And there's a lot of buildings like this. I even sent some to Nate. I don't know if they can be yeah, flashed up. up. Yeah, I was just gonna, so here's but the, I know, feel like without having any detail, we don't know that when it goes up, it's not going to look like this. I sent Nate several that, you know, this is in Amherst and, yeah, and Route 9, that they're kind of the shape of a house. But if it's all, you know, this one, are you referring to this one? if it's all planks, you know, horizontal planks and going across the facade it's all the same you know um with the plank you know there's not a point at which you know maybe you have contrasting of with a bay and when the bay comes out it's got shingles smaller going in a different direction i mean just there's and i at this there's many buildings around that one's in northampton um this Sorry. one's really dark yeah that's how i looked at that in northampton i was like god could it look like that this is on Route 9, almost in Amherst and Hadley, you know, where they do have the break where the kind of roof line starts, but it still just kind of has this kit-like look that is not, is just not appropriate in, and I guess the style comes in the details. And that bay, I just took a picture of, it's an apartment building going up in Northampton. Not that, yeah, not that that's what we'd want, but at the bay windows, they actually have shingles, small shingles that are going vertically in contrast to the long horizontal planks, and then there's all that trim. So at least, you know, it lends a certain charm, kind of Cape Cod look, but I feel like what- And the bay itself. Right, the bay itself. Is a different angle from the flat. Is one of these just, you know, yes. kind of, yes. a, for lack of, you know, yes. kit-like, which- Kit-like says a lot. Yeah. Yes. According to oh. information, um, at the last several meetings, there's been discussion about the perspective from the corner of Gray and Main Street. Yes. This new picture conveniently takes a picture across the street and to the west. So you're not going to get any perspective at all if there's any obstruction of that vista, which is something that was discussed at length at the last right. three meetings. No one here seems so to have mentioned that, but that's Well, we haven't mentioned everything since so we're starting I yet. understand right. that, but we're, again, it seems like getting, you know, can't see the forest through the trees. I just want to make sure <laughs> that <laughs> since it was something that was brought up and discussed at length, we don't have a picture here, even though we've got something new to look at. It is not discussing the point that the, the picture that should be offered should be from the corner of Maine and Gray as you enter the historic district and look up northwest, not north, but okay. northwest to the view of the two uh, Hills houses at the Triangle Street and the Dickinson Well, I think property. that's what Bruce is saying, that we need to be able to see it from... But this picture what, is no. very misleading. If we're misleading. holding a public comment, right. I think right. it's only fair that we hold to public okay. comment, please. Right. Thank you. Um, <laughs> what I want to encourage that we do is to dispose of this question of scale first. I know, and I, I don't want to be disrespectful here, I just want to observe what I've seen throughout my life with folks who are less familiar in discussing these subjects, and that is that you'll go for the details. Can Harry oppose? That we'll go for the details? That you will concentrate on the details. I think the first question to resolve is, are we satisfied that there is an appropriateness of scale? Are we satisfied that there is an appropriateness of scale? And if we are, then we can continue to discuss um, B windows, BTLs. boards, cupolas, whatever we want. I agree. But I agree. what so I'm are you concerned about. Are you talking about the square footage? Yeah. Or I'm just talking where about the volume, size. the massing. Oh, right. I think it's too big. I think it can be made smaller. There's lots of ways in which it could be made smaller, uh, less massive. And, and set back. But still um, have the square footage? Are you getting to reducing the square footage? Or I don't care. I don't care because the, the they will take care of the square footage. They want to fit their program in the building. I'm assuming that they will maintain it, but if they think that there is a way in which they can 
greatly influenced by changing something in relation to the area, then I imagine they'll do that, and that's their business, and that's their challenge, and that's their prerogative. Because prerogative. it's square footage, it's not larger than the, ha than the structures around it. So yeah, I, I think what Bruce is saying yeah. is Oh, I don't that, agree. Right. It's 4,400. No, that's a pretty damn big house. I don't think there are too many houses that big around it. But I think the, I the, we the, the I think, you know, to Bruce, to your point, you were talking about the scale and the massing, the important thing there is, you know, if the applicant says we're not going to go below a certain square footage, then maybe what they're proposing isn't appropriate. So the question is, are they going to make their design work with what the commission thinks is appropriate? So, you know, it's not whether or not, you know, if, if for instance, if, you know, they came in and said we want 10,000 square feet, nothing less, you'd say that's too big. But we don't know yet if they're willing to put their program into a smaller mass or volume, right? That's As what I you're said, asking. That's their point. I, that's I, not I, our concern. I, no, I, I know. I'm just think, saying I don't I think. I do think, think when you're thinking of the this and that point made that this building is here much longer than the single occupant. Yeah. Single occupant and it what is built there is going to be on the scape for a long time. It has to fit in. That's our whole mission. It has to fit in. And that's why I think if if you could be in the line of Ray Street, have about the same setback, and not block entirely the view coming from the other side, you'd have a much better chance of getting the commission to say, yes, it's appropriate, than at the moment when you're dealing with so many needs and trying to fit it in, and in some ways, that's my well, feeling. I think the setback on Gray Street is probably a Appropriate good. in terms of how the other houses That's, are. Yes, like, I'm it, talking it's too about Main Street. Main Street, Main Street, Main Street, Main Street, Main Street but agree. you could have that same setback as Gray Street has, you know, somewhat or a little bit, and then you would still not completely obliterate the view from this side, but it doesn't seem to work with the needs. That's that's a dilemma. Um, I'm, you'll help with the procedure. Um, is there a point at which we might go around the table with yeah. the commission and say whether there are specific things that we see that could be changed that would make it a building that enhances and improves the historic district at that point? Because that's our language as well as appropriate and compatible. There are a lot of terms that we're working with in terms of mass, location, uh, viewscape, etc. And simply itemize what we think might be needed. Yes, I, I guess that I get back to, I mean, we have articulated that before, and what we keep also getting is we accommodated this, and then we had to go back, and then that that erases a request that was made previously. Well, we but we I don't want trade-offs. I mean, I, no, I agree, I agree, but that's why I think if that's the most effective way to go around, which is what we did um, well, last time. But I, I would just have a question. What is the square footage? Is it 36 or 44? 44. 44, okay. So I've seen it written different ways. Yes. <clears throat> um, and then if we open to public, I, I would like to not have public comment till the end or we'll never get back to having our Right, I mean, I think the commission's in a difficult position because there's been a new design presented right now. That's why I, I like the idea of looking at, you know, some of the some of the other criteria and seeing if we can provide guidance, as Bruce has suggested, Moran, and stepping back and saying, do we like the massing, the proportion, and not get down to the detail at this point? Because otherwise, you know, they might go through the effort of really working this design, and then we don't know right. yet whether or not how much it'll work on the site, right? So I don't, I don't really want to create more work built for you just to have the commission have another discussion on this if we can talk about it now in terms of the mass and design. So that, that's where I'm hoping we can talk to you. I mean, I think the treatment of Main Street, you know, in my memo I mentioned a number of things. And so again, it's like, our, does the commission think the massing is appropriate the way it is in this now? If not, is the roof too high? Is the are the facade treatments appropriate? Are the setbacks appropriate? All those things we could talk about um, generally to provide guidance. And that way, the applicant knows, okay, I can work with this design or it doesn't sound like it's gonna work at all. I don't need to go back and try to make a 3D model 
with everything in here because I know the commission wants you know these different things. Right, so, so do I, we each take three minutes to just you know? Yeah, I minutes. think so. I mean, okay. if we if if people are there, if we're comfortable enough saying okay, here you know Bruce and Moran have kind of talked a little oh, bit about okay. what they like. Yes. No, but then we, we have to open up. Door. Door. We can't. Can wait, wait, wait. No, do we? Oh. Yeah. I mean, if you, if that's the, if the No, no, wait, I'm just saying if we start letting people speak from, then we have to really do. I do. Oh, you should talk. Yeah, then, then we, I feel like if we let somebody speak from the public, then we have then to. Then have to have everyone everybody speak, speak. speak. Well, not necessarily, but I think, so the room, we have to leave a little after six. And so I think, you know, knowing we have an hour and say 15, hour and 20 minutes, 25 minutes, we could say how much time we want to have now for the commission. We could have, you know, a certain amount of time for public comment. So. You know, if we think we can, the commission can go around and have a conversation for the next 15 minutes and then There's see where we are. Of, yes. There's a point of order from the audience. Yeah, I, I, I would point out, uh, I'm confused yes. now about the structure of the meeting. There was a presentation, and now I'm listening to a deliberation of the commission. And am I to assume that when you're finished deliberating, then the public will have an opportunity to speak? Why would you deliberate before you hear from the people who have something to say? We, we've been hearing what people, I mean, for, so that's why I asked if I had to close the public portion. We don't have, have, public, have to have public comment at every meeting, because what happens is we never, last time was like the first time we really got to deliberate after three meetings. So now, now but you were saying we shouldn't. Well, I think, so we were, the commission was presented with a new design, you know, the hearing's still open, so I think, the commission is still at a point of trying to determine what they think is appropriate for the site and with this new design, how to provide guidance to the applicant. And so, you know, if the commission takes a certain amount of time to do that, you know, we're leaving the hearing open so that they still can hear public comment, there still can be changes to the design, but they haven't had that time to. I was asking. Yeah. So now the commission is deliberating. The public is not speaking, the presentation is finished. And but we're not, we're it. speaking, but we haven't closed the meeting to the public. Right. That's what okay. Nate was suggesting, we not close right. it. We're not really deliberating, we're trying to understand. We're trying to understand, we right. This is important for all of you. Yes, so and that's what we, <coughs> so if we want to take, I don't have a timer, but yeah, three minutes. <laughs> no more than three minutes each to, if you, to address if, what thoughts or concerns or how you feel about the current design, which we're just seeing for the first time, but it's not that different than what we've seen in terms of concerns you had before. If you would just like to share that, so. Why don't we hear from Peggy, Jim, yes, and Yes, I think we should start okay. from Karen, with Karen. first. Okay. Yeah, start with Susan. Um, one of the things I really didn't like about the last, uh, about this, this one, of last week is that try as I could, this seemed like a, from the facade of Main Street, a hodgepodge to me, I, even though I know your design of the New England barn and stuff still to me. This, I, I think this uh, addresses that um, and I like it better. Still, I have reservations. if. I, I like the Gray Street uh, design. I think it fits in with Gray Street. The Main Street, to me, the mass, this spreading out and the fact that you're, it's there and it's just, it's not in line with, with uh, Gray Street and then it stops. It's just uh, very much too close to the front. The view is completely gone coming up here. And I wish really, I, I mean, it's clear to me that why you can't have the two story, but I agree with Bruce that if the mass, the spread of it were somehow more condensed and in fitting and appropriate, I could be enthusiastic about it. And as it is right now, I would like to see it in the seat, go there, see it, and then see, is it really gonna be as detrimental as I don't want it to be. So that's my opinion on this. Would I say put the details on it now? I would say not yet. Not yet. Uh, Jim? Well, I like to propose changes at Yellowstone and get the large section over near the Gray Street. That helps keep the mass of down so that 
It's more visually able to see the Hills House and the, around the corner. Also, I, I think I complained at the last one about the, the, the berm, and now it's gotten down to close to ground level. I think that that's a great help. Uh, I'm very fond of um, Greek Revival stuff, style, and I think that's being kept, of course. That helps give it some kind of unifying sense throughout the whole building. Having it set back, having the new section in reverse, if it could set back from the road a little bit, even though it may miss a parking space, I, as others have brought up here, I think it's a good idea. Um, you know, I, I, th I think and to, to look at detail and everything, we, we need to uh, probably see another set of plans, another another session. I know they one session after another, but like Karen says, it's going to be here for a long time. And, uh, you know, we, we want something that's appropriate for that area. Thank you. Getting closer. Thank you. Peggy. I woke up last night and, and wrote a letter to my commis fellow commissioners and our community. And I wasn't sure I would read it, but given that you're asking us each to speak, it's easier for me to do that than to try to improvise. So dear fellow commissioners and neighbors, since the distressing meeting this past Monday, the conflicting needs of members of the Amherst community have had me up at night. I live in the Thompson House across the street from the Women's Center Hills House. I walk and or drive past the property in question several times a day. In my heart of hearts, I would like to see it undistur undisturbed by construction of any sort. But what are the possibilities, legalities, and my obligations? That a parcel of the property was purchased in good faith by the Amherst media cannot be questioned, but intent to build was not deliberated at the time by the Dickinson Historic Commission. Had the commission been involved initially, its views and those of the surrounding neighbors and townspeople might have affected the Amherst Media's decision to purchase and build on that site. As things stand, however, our commission is asked to uh, respond to a project already given a form of town approval. My dilemma, I want to be as supportive as possible of Amherst Media. Their mission is an important one but I also want to hold firm to the reason for the commission, which is to support changes in the historic distri district consistent with its mandate, to honor and preserve what we can of the past while moving into the future. The two historic houses on the property, along with the Dickinson homestead, define the essence of the Dickinson historic district, much as the town's common, the town, town commons the Jones Library represent the Amherst Town Center. To significantly alter the exterior of either of the existing buildings, i.e. The two, the two mansions, or to significantly impinge on the viewscape by adding a building which detracts from the landscape and architecture or only makes a nod to that history, defeats the historic nature of the area and the Commission's mandate that a reasonable and generous offer has been, proposal has been offered by the owners of the abutting property to purchase the property under discussion and to create a park for which they will fund maintenance seems an incredibly generous offer, which I would hope the Amherst Media Board could accept. That seems to me a win-win for the Amherst Media Organization and the town of Amherst. To my mind, the only other alternative would be to drastically alter the currently proposed design so that a new building would be clearly and visibly compatible with the two historic structures and the surrounding landscape. And this, this does not do that for me. I mean, the, the historicity of those mansions is so distinctive. While I am in full support of the work of the Amherst Media, I feel that my first obligation as a member of this commission is to protect the historic nature of the area in question 
and my second is to be of whatever service I can, as the Amherst media would seek a different property upon which to build. This decision on my part comes after sleepless nights, I'm going to cry, trying to imagine a solution which will serve both my obligation to the commission on which I serve, as well as an obligation as an Amherst resident who wants to support the important work of the Amherst Media Organization, as well as just a neighbor and friend to many people in this room and the larger community of Amherst. Sincerely, Peggy Schwartz, member Dickinson Local Historic Commission. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did you want to add anything to no. it? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> no, just that I, I hope we can get through this in a way that's constructive and that will work for everybody. I just pray that we can find a way, a way through. And I don't feel like we're there quite yet. Thank you. Uh, Marianne. Okay, at first, I, I really want to thank you, Peggy, for expressing what may not be visible as we meet as commissioners. But the conflict, the anguish of the situation that has been created by others who came before us, who subdivided the land with different owners, votes to build, decisions not to sell to the town. There's a lot of backstory to this. Different zoning for the lot. The different zoning. There, there's a lot of back, backstory to this, which we know, which cannot affect our decision as commissioners, but is burdensome mm -hmm. in ways that no other, no other situation that we've dealt with has. So I want to thank you for the affect. I also want to remind us that even though I was not on the commission at the time, my understanding was that in the renovations of the Hills House conducted by Mr. Gerald Gadera, there were at least four hearings and two site visits. So this is not so extraordinary what we're going through here, given the tremendous importance of that part of the local historic district. That said, uh, here are the things that are a, a number of deal breakers for me. I am glad that the uh, berm will be one foot. I want to see it moved as much to the east as possible, and I would like to see that on the next presentation where it is on the open plot of land. I'm glad to see that the west wing of the last presentation has been flipped. But I would like to see elevation drawings to get the impact of that as one comes down Gray Street and as one drives from the east to the west and is seeing that now larger building. I'm interested in seeing what would now be the larger east wing on Gray Street. I would like to see an exploration of that as two stories, picking up on Nate's request that we have some cost estimates because it may indeed be a hardship that would forbid that, but I think we need to factor that into our conversation. I want to see fewer parking spots, and I think that we can write a letter supporting that to the planning board, in order to provide more space to move the new west wing further to the east and away and therefore present, preserve as much of the, as the viewscape to both, but particularly to the Hills House, as possible because I think that the old West Wing and even the new West Wing and the berm all impinge on that. Uh, I want to see the work, not lots of detail, but the work on the facade. I want to be able to see that setback and how that lobby entrance attractively and convincingly connects the two wings of the building. And I do want to see the new West Wing set back. So 
Uh, I know that the parking lots pose a problem there, and so that's something that I suggest to that uh, effect. Um, I'm going to come back to another point in just a moment. Uh, I, I want to see the window treatment not only, or the, the windows, the plan for the windows as viewed from triangle, which may now be more attractive with the flipping of the two buildings, but I will want to see the windows as seen from Grain Street now as well. Um, Okay, let me just see. I, I, I am very concerned still about the Main Street facade, about its being attractive, its being, uh, I, I, I think the setback is important. Eventually we will need to see the materials so that they are high quality, but it's premature for that. Now the last thing I'm going to suggest, this is not an ask, this is not a deal breaker for me, but I have to say I have men made many personal site visits and taken lots and lots of pictures that try to remember what the hillside looks like, where the trees are, et cetera. And what did strike me this time is that if you stand and look from your office building, Mr. Gillen, which is quite a lovely building, it's modest compared to the Hills House, but there's an interesting visual up and down the hillside from your building across the street and the hill's house on the top of the hill. And so I did have the wild thought that I'm not requ <laughs> requiring that you pursue. Is there a way to get some visual of those two buildings in the West Building, which is an intermediary spot? between your office on the south side, the Hills House, and so it would interrupt what is a fairly tiresome stretch. I mean, I, I also love farmhouses and barns, but I think not on the entrance to town in that particular spot. So I had the interesting idea of having a different kind of architecture on the new West Wing, smaller, you know, I have to share the concern about the mass, but that might somehow echo your building on the south side and the Hills House up on the north, but on a small scale. So that's just a thought, whereas my thought about the parking spaces is an ask. Thank you. Thank you for making that distinction. Bruce. Um, well, you've heard me. Uh, but I'll repeat it because I want to be very clear. Um, I have not gotten past the scale of this building. I think um, insofar as we're asked to consider a proprietary scale, I think this is too big in this location. Um, and I particularly think it's, uh, and I think that it can be uh, done differently. So. I would like the applicant to um, come to us with at least two substantial massing variations, at least two substantial massing variations. I think the exploration of a two-story structure might be one of them. Um, I've already indicated that I think that uh, some elegant resolution of a a more horizontal, um, more modern building, um, more simple, let's say, I would use the word modern. Um, I think Nate circulated to us um, the images of the church up in town, the, the yeah. what is it, that's yes. where Peter Pan bus lines is, yes. the old Baptist church, I yeah. think, and then what was done behind it, uh, very different. But um, but it's back. It's not on the road. Oh, well, yeah. it's 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 very much on the road because you can see it all the way down from from uh, Route Nine. It's very prominent well, you, and very you, nice. The point you're making is that they're different, not that that. I would be like what you to see here. Uh, because I think that I cannot support oh, okay. this Peter from a point of. I mean, given. I mean, it's it. It's a, it's a nice design in any other place, and without this requirement staring me in the face, I'd sure be able to go for it. 
And if it were, if I was on the design review board or the planning board or the zoning board, I would probably uh, have no trouble at all in supporting this building. But you know, we've got this thing here. I don't see how we can we can rep, 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 represent that this is appropriate scale. If we do, we've shot ourselves in the foot forever after. Because when anyone comes up and says, um, if we try to get uh, some uh, denial or some leverage on the basis of something is inappropriately scaled, everybody is going to point to this and say, well, you didn't seem to mind there. And I think we will do ourselves, uh, as a commission, damage that we won't easily be able to or ever be able to recover from. So I think, and, and, we, we, and we absolutely cannot, I don't think, give a certificate of appropriateness to this without at least, without at least asking for two or three or more um, massing variations. And I would very much like these to be done in a, some kind of BIM. I mean, I could always do this myself. I don't know I can't, but uh, you know, I have the capacity on my computer at home. I still do what I used to do. And I know it's not too difficult to do this, and you don't have to go to the Netherlands. It's just a matter of a piece of software. And, and then, and, and, and Bill, I don't think it has to be, um, it doesn't even need the windows or the corner boards or anything, because all I think, and, I, and I, I want to, it, it's the scale that I'm talking about. So massing models, like the model that we saw, is just a cardboard model. That's a massing model. What we want, though, is A, to be able to compare massing models one to another, and B, to be able to fly around it and have um, contextual uh, uh, photographs with the, the massing of others. And we can, we can verify that from time to time, by, as we did last week, by going out with poles and strings and, and then superimposing super <coughs> from specific aspects that we want. Um, those white line drawings that will give scale. But initially, we want to have um, volumetric studies of, 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 of multiple options that would reduce the volume of this building. It may or may not reduce the footprint. As I said, that's up to the applicant. But I know that be I know it can be done less imposingly. I know it can be done less imposingly. And we haven't seen or tried to, to do that yet. We've been focused on details way too much to my eternal frustration. I'm glad we're having this conversation as a, as a commission because we spent way too long listening to well-intentioned and, 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 and passionate and, and thoughtful comments from everybody, but it was getting in the way of us. We were being dumped on, essentially, in the nicest possible way by endless amounts of information cascading down on us for two whole meetings, and then we're trying to figure out where we are as a group and we so now at least we're talking together about this okay. and I want to I, I want to implore you because I think if we don't we're in deep trouble to consider appropriateness of scale and to really ask ourselves whether not whether this could be made less bad by some detailed amelioration which it could I could put a lot of effort into that too, but I don't want to yet. I think we need to look at different massing, uh, particularly with, uh, with, with um, some combination of flat roofs or two stories or pushing back. Um, there's lots of ways in this can be done, okay. and we haven't seen any of them yet. Thank you. And um, I, I mean, I just, you know, I'll be brief, but would. Uh, no you know, be. echoing <laughs> what was said, but, um, you know, my focus on, it, it's not just the details, it's the style, I guess. So I would not, when you're taking these um, requests, their suggestions and requests into account, if it comes back and it's smaller and it's set back and it has fewer parking spaces and the style still looks like what I call kind of from a kit, that's going to be a deal breaker for me. I'm only one person on the, you know, so it's not just the details of, you know, what kind of trim you're going to have around the window, but the, the quality of the materials and the general look and feel, if it looks like, you know, one of those buildings that just goes up on 
you know, Route 9 or, you know, somewhere even on the UMass, you know, campus, that's, that's all part of, you know, the bylaw of being appropriate to the, the style and the scale and the look of the neighborhood. But um, I, what was, what I said two meetings ago when we, everybody, I think after the meeting, we sent to Nate what were our, our requirements that we wanted to see that you came back with last time. And for me, the setback is a real um, issue, that having the building be five feet from the sidewalk, um, just, there's, there's no building that's anywhere close to that, going from, on Main Street from town, actually all the way to like Southeast Street. Um, so I realized any building there on that particular part of Main Street between Triangle and Gray the north it, side. Right, on the north side, on the south side, yeah, on the north side is not, you know, it's going to be closer to the street than the other buildings, but five feet is just, um, it, it just, I don't really see that almost anywhere. That just doesn't work for me. Um, I would like to see if we could do fewer parking spaces and move the building back. Um, and then I had a concern, and I don't know how, again, this is when you turn it around, and but I, that when you're on Gray Street, are you seeing like a wall that keeps you from seeing anything behind it? Yes. Like when it was flipped before so that you had it was so high on the west side, now it's going to be on the east side. But, but I guess you said it's going to be shorter than the other buildings. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be as tall as the other buildings on Gray Street. Yeah. Going uphill rather steeply. Mm -hmm. um, and I do, you know, when I look at this, which may have been what. Uh, one of the members. Uh, it looks like this is very far from the Hill House, but when we did the site visit, it was really to there, which I guess is why we need to actually see how it's placed on the lot. Because when you look here, you think, oh, it's you know way down the hill. But when we're when we made the site visit, the building was not blocking the Hill House, but it came very close. So this is giving the appearance that it's pretty far away. So that's that's why I think um, you know if we could see it sure. really placed on the lot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, this is more helpful than what we've had before, but you know, really in relation to the other buildings. Um, yeah. So again, you know, I I I know it's a give and take, but you know, if our if we need a certain setback, and then we also want less mass. And that to get less less mass, we lose the setback. That doesn't, you know, really get us closer to where we need to go. Yeah. So, just, just add one thing, and that is, I, I think I might have alluded on this, but uh, of course, when you had the larger building to the west, as I drove down Triangle, up and down Triangle, visualizing it, it was a big blank wall that just blanked out everything, and was not attractive and not suitable. So that's why I would like you to really look at the visual from Triangle Street now that you flipped the buildings. I've also have a call in to Jim at the Amherst Media and see if there's any way that there, a studio could have windows in it. But there could and be blackout curtains inside. That's what I'm thinking. And so that's, that's why you see this big blank is because yes. we have this mindset of a windowless too, but maybe that's not. Yes. Cast a stone. I'll, right. I'll find out. Yes, I mean because I, I thought of that, and mm. uh, there is the needs from interior, but there are blackout curtains that do that. Mm. But there are the needs from the exterior, which is how does the building look? And indeed, sometimes it's nice to have windows to use the studio as a conference room. So it could be a win-win. So I think we we feel like we've given you. <laughs> enough input and this you know will all be written down and presented you know to well, you. I mean I think so the I mean I feel like the Commission has been discussing what you know providing some feedback I just I'm not sure I just want to know that do we want the applicant to proceed with like, what do we want the applicant to proceed with so I've heard a number of comments and I'm not sure there's consensus right now about what we want from the applicant so you know is it to work on this one design? Is it to come back with different massing models? You know, is it, you know, what are we, what are exactly are we asking? Um, 
I just want to make sure we are clear on that. Okay. So I, I think we okay, provided I think we provide, provided guidance, but I'm not sure we've. I think we've asked ask. for what we would like to see proceeding with this design, and then you know, when we look back through our minutes from each of the meetings, there was a request, as Bruce articulated, for some different, some totally different approaches that would minimize. The Is mess. that for the West Wing mainly? No, or for I the think entire, it was for the entire. Bill's an architect. This is a design problem. We haven't really explored it to this level of satisfaction that is driven by this statement here. Um, one way to resolve this, or to at least give a little more clarity, would be to see who would vote to deny this application based on a feeling that it is inappropriate from the point of view of scale. If four of us feel that, that would be a pretty strong indication to the applicant as to what the way forward might be. I mean, you have to admit that would be a pretty good, clear piece of feedback. But the scale would not necessarily speak against that particular design. Yeah. So when there really are two different issues because uh, at least I've been trying to argue ways to scale back using that design, that basic concept, and right, you have been asking for other it. concepts. I, uh, well, I'll rephrase my question um, based on the, 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 the premise that I don't think that, that this uh, set, set, set of volumes, no matter how they're organized, could be satisfied, could be okay. uh, approvable, uh, could be deemed to be appropriate in, scale, in terms of scale. You could you could flip them around all over the place. But, but what if you reduce the square footage? But it was the same just basically. Uh, well, it would need to be a pretty substantial. But let's see that. Let's see that. I, but I, I'm I'm I am not able to. I can't see myself being able to support this application as it stands from the point of view of the volumetric presence. Its volumetric presence is too great. No I matter what that you, you did requested to it. that you had a specific request, and if we all support that request, that there be some alternative designs. I, well, it's are, different from saying yes. We all think it's a good idea a, to saying without it, it's a no. It's no deal. I mean, otherwise, if if, if Bill goes away thinking one person uh, believes that this uh, proposal is unsupportable uh, and is uh, and should be denied as it stands, and the rest of you think it would be a good idea to do some massing studies. He's not going to do any massing studies, and I wouldn't in his position. I, I would feel happier having, and I've asked that last time too, I would like to see a different concept because I do think that you've done an amazing job at making this fit so many things that we've asked. And now if you could get it back and smaller, but I do think that on this site, something, I mean, I, it still doesn't make me very happy. I agree with you. It would be nice to have a completely different. You don't agree with me. I no, do. she does. No, do. you said it would be nice. That's not what I'm saying. Right, right. I'm it's saying it's, it's imperative. A requirement. There's a difference a requirement. between nice and imperative. That's true. There's a difference. I'm so much more timid in <laughs> saying what I am, but I agree with we you. We have to I be think. clear. Yes, Otherwise, we're I not agree. doing anybody a favor. You're, you're if we absolutely wait right. months to be clear, we've got to, to be this categorically just, it just declarative. Doesn't, even if it's smaller well, that's the and question. set back, yeah. it does not, to me, fit there where it is. I mean, I would, if I could, I'd become an amazing fundraiser for Amherst Media and give you $20 million to do what you want in a beautiful place because your requirements are just really hard to fit in with making this a beautiful asset to this uh, site. I think that's well said that that whatever if if anything ever gets built on that property it has to really enhance the property yes. and not simply kind of sort of try to finesse it in, in terms of the, de the details, if there's, if there's an overall gestalt to this property, 
but just doesn't lend itself at all. If, if there was a consensus on the majority of the commissioners or that that this design, you know, even set back more, parking spaces reduced, that this design did not meet the criteria, mm -hmm. then wouldn't we be advised to vote on the, I mean, right. I heard the town council saying that rather than just saying, we're gonna leave the meeting open and come back with a whole other design, that then we vote, do we then do an up and down vote in this and then they come back, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's the question. Can we, can the commission provide enough, um, you know, um, constructive, you know, criticism based on the criteria that an applicant, you know, if this is denied, know what then needs to come forward with that could be approved. So, you know, that's really the question. You know, is there enough articulation and explanation of the criteria of why this design doesn't work that, you know, the applicant says, okay, well, here are the things I could change to come back and maybe it won't be approved, but at least I'm getting closer. So the question is, do we keep the hearing open and let them do that again, or do we take a position and say, okay, like Corinne just said, this style, no matter what, if it's small or whatever, it's just not going to work. You know, the commission takes a vote, and then you know the applicant can submit a new design, or do we keep it open and say, okay, we want to have this conversation. We want to see three new concepts. We want to see different concepts. We think we can make it work. Let's keep it going. I mean, I think that's really the commission can make that decision. I mean, I think I, I don't have an opinion either way. I think. It is going to become a drawn out process and um, you know it's kind of the only way to operate in a public setting we can't have you know behind closed doors um, so I, you know I, I don't I don't I don't really have a recommendation on that right now with the Commission if we feel like we the applicant can come back and you know have those different volumes and the different masses in a in a format that can be viewed by the commission, I mean, I agree that, you know, software, you know, just Google SketchUp and there's free software you could implement that could, you know, drop in terrain. It's the very bottom of the, and you could, the you know, lower you, level, could, entry level, but it's fine for us. Right, we might be able to get through, okay, what is the appropriate volume and um, mass and proportion for this site? Um, if we think, we, if, we, if we want that, then we say, let's keep the hearing open, set a new date. If we don't think we're gonna move that way, then I would say, okay, let's, Let's take a vote on what's been presented. I, I mean, I don't because we can't keep going around. Right. Yeah. Because I feel like we've definitely, which is good if that's where that we've gone from. You know, this is what how we'd like to see this design be right. different. To well, maybe we want a whole different design, and then right. I think that maybe. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, that. yes. The several mentions of it's too big, and that the volume is too great. So I have to. S We've been told from day one, this is the, the rooms, this is the spaces that we need. And uh, I don't know if they can live with anything. Well, we've, because we've been coming back iteratively and hearing that it's too large, we've been trying to Scaling. narrow, making it smaller, making it look smaller. But if you are serious about a, as Bruce said, a serious reduction in the volume, I don't think the buildings, the, the client, no way could could live with it. It just won't be because it won't fit. Don't It'll fit. Did. It's a huge site. It's amazing. I mean, we've got something this big, and we're only using a little corner of it for reasons we for good reason. Yeah, for, for good reasons. Mm -hmm. But I think right now, Bill, for instance, the the west. No matter what mass you're looking at, there it's a wide wide structure so your gable end is very wide and big and so to have an appropriate pitch on that roof you have a high roof because it's so wide and so the question is you know is there other ways to structure the building so you don't have to have basically a 15 foot high ridge line on a one-story building so i mean those are the things to me that we haven't we don't know yet as a commission and so you know in staff in the staff memo you know, those are points that are brought up. You know, it's a really wide gable to try to fit on a, what is a big mass. And so we don't know what are the different iterations of how that could take shape. I well, think we did, we did reduce but it. Not, but not in, from what I'm hearing today, not enough. And so right. even the interior layout of the, of the program, so even if the client needs a certain square footage, we don't know that it's been the layout and the program of the space has been um, considered in different ways that the floor plan is radically altered. So, you know, 
we've been presented that there's a studio wing and then there's an office wing, but we don't know if, why, have, why does there have to be a central lobby? Why couldn't the lobby be linear along one whole side of the building in a way that the other spaces are arranged differently? So you're not having two masses with an atrium, but you could have, you know, one building that has, you know, different, you know, different layout. So, I mean, to me, that's going to Bruce's idea of having different concepts. So I, you know. But Bruce said a smaller volume, and you haven't mentioned. But I think, but I think a small volume. But, for example, I don't know how big your building is that we like so much that where your where your office is. If that building, I don't know what the volume is, were a design here, I would say, wow, it fits in from all sides. You know, it's but just that your needs are with with your needs. They're kind of does volume have to be square footage or like you're saying you could have a square footage, but it doesn't have to have. If it was a different design, can, it would have less of a volume. You can have a flat roof. Um, there are, um, I mean, the Italianate style that was popular through various parts of the uh, Victorian era had uh, essentially flat roofs. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and even if you wanted to echo um, uh, a Victorian era, you could do a flat roof by, uh, by going in that direction. You could also um, go in the direction that um, we discussed a moment ago with the the, the variation in styles and so forth of the uh, building further uptown um, and you've heard me on the topic which I know we have explored and I haven't convinced you but that uh, um, maybe if it was the only way to uh, resolve satisfactorily the scale that we um, could uh, basically have a, a simple elegant um, flat roof well, I building. I think we'd like to see that. I, I uh, and that's the direction yeah. I would go in, and I would expect to be able to convince you all that uh, that was uh, the best way to go. Because I think, I mean, as I said, this is a fine design. It's just it just doesn't fit what we're obligated to judge it by. It doesn't fit what we're obligated to judge it by. So we have to find some other alternative. And my other alternative would include flattening those roofs by whatever stylistic means. Um, the architect thought was appropriate. Marianne? Um, I see ways, and I've suggested ways, of reducing the volume of what's been presented to us. Um, I w would not want to lose an expert, I would not want to lose a drawing that reflected those ideas in the efforts to look elsewhere for other ideas. I concur in that. Because I uh, do not share my colleague's feeling on this, as, as he knows. So I would like to see more work on this design in line with what I at least try to you know, specify. I do think there is real virtue in I'm not an architect, I can't even draw. But something that gave a suggestion of other options. Not developed, not lots of time and money invested in them. And it may be, I mean, I didn't realize this until today, that when I had the straight line view from your building up to the hills, that a small scale, is it Italianate? Is that mm -hmm. what that style is? Is that a, well, yours, it, what I is like yours, the style Anne. of your building? Is that Queen, Queen, Anne. Queen yeah. Anne? Thank you. Okay. That's, what, that's what our, our report stated that, that we did for the district. Okay, well, thank you very Queen much. Anne. Queen, Anne. Yeah. Queen Anne. So, a modified. And Robert Frost lived in that house. Okay. But the house was moved from the yeah. police there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. But, um, you know, that would be interesting. And it would be visually consistent from Main Street. So. That might be an option, one option. Uh, I, I think, since we seem to be 3-3 three, three in the way that we're tilting, my view is not to lose how far we've advanced in discussing this option while spending one more meeting looking at what you've been able to do following our suggestions reducing the number of parking slots, et cetera, et cetera. 
Uh, well, see, I think, I don't know, I would like to see both. Well, that's you what I'm saying. Yeah. It's not either or. Right. I just wanted but, to make sure to be, yeah. that we were not we are not making a decision that was either or. Right. But that I think we do need to commit ourselves to make an either or decision at our next meeting. I think we, the, if we possibly can, if if this all comes in, so that we can really. So you, yes. what you're saying is to request along these lines. Well, well we made specific suggestions yeah, on that. Incorporate yes. specific suggestions into this yes. general design as well as to see maybe two possibilities. You know, yeah. Different approaches. One of which might be Queen Anne. Yeah. Or because the, it's consistent. Or the single story. The single as story. Bruce's that might be the second option. Yes. I think if we don't do that. I agree. That we're we, we neged on our responsibility. Yes. On our. We we should have some yeah. comment now. Uh, but no, Peggy. Just one last like question something. for uh, the media people representing. Is, is is it under any consideration that maybe you would look at another site or other no, that's sites? That's you know that's really example. beyond our. Oh, I'm not allowed yeah, to. Yeah, we really. That? Can, that's Wait, beyond that's not, our. That's sorry. their decision, not ours. Oh, yeah, we no. can and only based, deal with the architecture yes. and how it's appropriate yes. to the community. Got so it. we really can't. I'm in um, So let's. So we want to maybe we have 25 have 10 minutes. minutes of public comment, and then uh, okay, we don't have to yeah, lose the hour hour Yeah, hour, but then we want to, or should we have a public comment before we wrap up exactly what? Right. We have yeah. a public comment now. Yeah. How many people would like to make public comment? Okay. Um, let's start. Can I make a suggestion? Uh -huh. If Nate could bring up Google Earth, we can look at the site. We can see all the views. I have it on my phone. You know, you get a pretty good view with Google Earth. Sure, I mean, I think, you know, the, I think that would be helpful. Right now, the commission, you know, we're, they're still trying to look at, you know, a proposed design. So we're asking that the design be, you know, implanted in that so we can have the contextual model. Um, yes, and, and I think um, Tom Lodner, I live on Amherst Street. Well, wait, wait, have it, yeah. Uh, you said you were going to public. Comment. Yeah, but I haven't, we haven't called on you. Quite yet. But you did. No, 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 you just, oh, did you come and talk, but I haven't actually. No, I just okay. want to say. Come up in front and say who you, you want to come. Oh, can I just say briefly, I think you're doing And your name is? Job. Can you say again? Tom Lodger. And your address? 175 Amity Street. I think you're doing a terrific job. I think Nate has prepared an excellent outline of a design. But then I discovered when I arrived today, the design has changed. Yeah, that's the way it goes. So you're now faced with a sudden new design without the backup documentation. And I think it's a tough job, a, a tough place you're in, and I, good luck. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Ms. Greenbaum? Um, I'm speaking as an abutter now, not as a reporter. Could you give your name and address? Oh, Hilda Greenbaum, 298 Montague Road, and I own 351 Main Street. Thank you. Okay. Um, my biggest problem with this building is that it's totally unbalanced. Classical buildings, the, the left and the right should parallel each other in some way. And here you've got two totally different things with different, different masses, different slopes of the roof. Um, I was taken the other day to visit libraries and I happened to be taken to the Granby Library, which is a new building and it, take, it took its central structure from the original library, which was a cute little Doric building on the, in the historic common of Granby. So it has a one story with Doric columns in the center connecting two wings that are parallel. Of course, it's not a much bigger lot, but it's a classic building and it looks classical and it's balanced, which I think the Greeks would be very happy with. So that, my thing is that you can have two things. I, I think that varnish is totally out of proportion with relation to the, the, the east side of the building. Um, I'm wondering in terms of the berm, has anybody thought about maybe just a, a detention pond that might even have some, some nice water flowers that go around the edge of it and, and, and a sitting area that might be a nice place to relax rather than a bump in the grass. Uh, I had... Is that a question for the for the? Uh, yeah, that's, a, that's an idea to yeah. go look at that. 
And um, I'm really bothered by the fact that these buildings are just so totally different. The the west structure is too large for the site. It doesn't look like the east side. I would like to see two parallel balanced structures and not look like a uh, somebody sitting on a seesaw and waiting <coughs> down one end. Okay. Well, thank you. But I'm serious about yeah, looking no. at the new Granby Library. You may probably find a okay. picture online. It's much bigger than this, but it's balanced wings on a door. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Dr. Shabazz, did you? So, um, again, thank you. I know your job is difficult. However, we keep getting the goalpost moved uh, within the suggestions. And so as we, particularly Bill Gillen and Associates, attempt to uh, create something that is appropriate and that will be appropriate pertaining to the bylaws, and how you all are obligated, as you put it, to serve the community. You know, I really do, again, ask <coughs> you that, are you serving all of Amherst? Because we definitely have a history. And we record and document the history. And we are trying very hard to have a constructed building a new build, which is obviously new for you all as well, and to regard it with respect and to change every time, as you can imagine, is really uh, very difficult for us. Each time we're trying to take your suggestions in and incorporate it, once again, we have something and uh, we've changed it, as this gentleman uh, pointed out, and it's not that we are averse to changing it, but I can remember two meetings ago when you said directly, I'm glad it's not two stories. We don't want a two-story building. And now we're back to that suggestion. So your job is difficult. Definitely Bill Gillen and Associates' job is difficult. All of our job is difficult to consider what is historically appropriate uh, something that is subjective. What is historically appropriate for a community that everyone calls home? Okay, so that is, that's what I'd like to say. And again, I do understand that it is difficult and I hope we can get some clarity uh, for the next meeting. Thank you. Is there anyone? Uh, yes. Um, Matt Massingill, uh, I represent Harm's Way and also uh, um, I'm an Amherst resident. I think one thing that could be useful for the board is instead of just saying we're going to have another meeting in a month and, and the Amherst media has to go do all the things they have to do, is somehow s s arrange it to where they have sufficient amount of time to produce the documents that everybody can see days in advance, okay, <coughs> instead of the day of, which, which I, I, I can understand because you only had a week. You, I got to get here in a week and, and present these uh, a new set of plans for. Uh, but to coordinate it, so maybe it's not you don't put it on the schedule for next month. Maybe you put it on for two or three months down the road to give a uh, uh, sufficient amount of time and build in a requirement that. All submissions to the board <coughs> need to be uh, advanced a week before so people have enough time to comment on it instead of being surprised at the, at the meeting. Thank you. <coughs> Are there any other comments? Yes. John Hornick, a resident of Amherst. I am a user of Amherst Media, and so I am concerned about this. And observing this discussion, I think the greatest obstacle, honestly, is that the commission itself does not, has not reached a consensus about what it would like to see. In listening to each of the individual comments, what I hear are 
really quite different concerns that have been raised by different people. One person doesn't want anything at all on that site. Another person is concerned about the mass. Again, I won't go through it, but my concern is that it's very hard for the architect to respond without having a sense of what the priorities are of the commission, of what the consensus is around what ought to be done. As Bruce Coltham said, well, do we or do we not think that the current massing is a deal breaker? And you never reach consensus in response to that question. And is it an important question or isn't it? I, I don't know having listened to you. Other people talked about the style of a building across the street that's Mr. Gillen's. Is that, uh, if it's not that style or something like that, is that a deal breaker for everybody? I don't know. I don't know how Bill Gillen can walk away from here and say, well, what I should do is A, B, C, D, and then I'll have something that the Historic Commission can all agree upon. Unless you have a consensus, then you'll be iterating through this and he'll be iterating through this for months. <coughs> so I do really believe at this point there's an obligation on the commission not for individuals to keep making suggestions, which of course is productive in one way, but for you to reach some agreement around among those suggestions what it is you really would like to see the architect come back with. Okay, thank thank you. you. And I do feel I need to respond to a couple of points that, and then we'll which I usually wait till the end of public comments, but I feel I need to respond. Um, I do want to say this is, these are from the minutes, and this is what went out after the, it's dated August 15th. So we've had the same list of concerns, and a number of these are also the planning department, you know, planning staff concerns and commission concerns since this application was first presented on August 15th. So I know just so, you know, we're not dreaming up new requirements or requests at every meeting. This has been consistent since the, since the first meeting where the application was presented. And we're, the commission doesn't have to, every one of us don't have to be in agreement. Like there doesn't have to be a unanimous, we don't have to have a unanimous vote and to some extent you do want your commissions to reflect the community as a whole and not have us you know appointed because we're, we all have the same point of view and we're going to come down the same way um, on you know every application that comes before us um, and we what we're, we're grappling with today I think we all agree and we've said it since the beginning that we need to have a certain setback and so part of this I, I've said it before but we make a suggestion, then you come back, you know, then they, you know, come back with a different plan, and then we may push back on that, and that's if, you know, at one meeting we said we need it to be set back further, and then, then we, and we think that the West Wing is not in scale or volume appropriate for the setting of which it's in, so you come back with a smaller West Wing, but then we're back up to five feet from the sidewalk. Again, we haven't one of our major concerns about the setback has then been reversed, and that's, you know, so we, we, have, we, there, we have articulated some consistent requirements, but they seem to go back and forth as one, is accommod one request is accommodate, then another one gets bumped out. And I think we are all in agreement, although we may, you know, want to see different, you know, we may be articulating different smaller requests, but we are all saying that we don't think that the um, that the position that where it's situated on the lot on the lot that the volume of the building, whether it's square footage or just the actual massing of the we are all in agreement that the massing and the way this style looks right now and its placement on the lot and the berm was a concern that those are major items that have been a concern and they've been addressed in part, but they all haven't been addressed to everyone's to uh, kind of satisfaction uh, or in keeping with the by you know as we see being appropriate to the bylaw in in one iteration. Um, and it's not so much that we're looking for a historically 
appropriate building is it has to be a building that in scale and style and detail and setting on the property is consistent with the surrounding and enhances. area. Yeah. And mm -hmm. yes. uh, if I could make a comment to John's point, because I think it'll be helpful. John, your observation is correct, um, and it has a lot to do with what Jennifer said at the beginning of the meeting, that we were going to spend more time talking amongst ourselves and holding public comment. Um, because it's been very difficult for us to know who we are even. Uh, I said last week that not everybody was here, and, and I don't think you were. Um, three, uh, two, well, three of the seven of us, two of the six of us, this is the first application, essentially, that they've dealt with. So, the difficult, first difficult one. Well, well the first new building. It's, yes, well, yes. Uh, Karen and Peggy have very recently joined, yeah. Yeah. and so for the point of view of trying to figure out who we are as a as a, as six people on a commission, we've had to invest time in doing that, and at the same time, we've had a very active public engagement. So the first two meetings, we had virtually no conversation amongst ourselves. We even organized ourselves tonight a little differently so we could do this more effectively. So you're right, the, 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 there is a um, perhaps a disturbing uh, variance of, of, of thought and process amongst the six of us. We're better tonight, I think, by a long shot than we were last week, um, because we've had more time together. So I think we have to acknowledge John's point in conjunction with the, the, the process that we have, which we can only do, as you know full well, John, in public. We can't do it any other way. So we're, we're trying our best to marry public uh, input and various others sure. with this process of getting to know each other. And I think we all... And, and I should say also, we shouldn't confuse what we call an iterative process with moving the goalposts. Right, different. and then that's, I guess, in terms of moving the goalposts where I sort of got to this, because this has been consistent. It's an iterative process since, we're going through. It's since not the first moving meeting. any goalposts. Right. And I do, my sense is where we are all in agreement now that the proposed building, as, as currently proposed, we would not be comfortable. We, we don't issue a certificate of appropriateness. Yes, and, that. Should, and so we've we stipulated right. things that we would like to see changed with that approach. But we didn't see that approach until today. Yeah. Um, I believe did. Um, sure. Yeah. Um, Jessica Wilkinson, I'm at 20 Gray Street, and uh, I think you all have a letter that uh, a bunch of neighbors um, submitted. I believe it was uh, 14 neighbors, including 17 members of the women's woman's club. Uh, so we, we shared a little bit of information that we had been sent to yesterday, um, and uh, I wanted to first just commend the town for doing such a great job of summarizing um, the, and directing the commission and in, in, in keeping with the bylaws. I um, was really happy to see that down on paper and to remind the commission about its, its role and its, and its uh, mission. Um, and I think everyone here agrees that the that Amos Media is a great um, value to this community, uh, but um, important to, for the commission to keep in mind that, as the town put it, um, it was not this commission's role to um, to comment on the purpose of the, the building and the use, vision, or program of the of the applicant. Um, and I heard a great shift today in the commission in, um, in its comments and keeping them uh, within the constraints of the bylaws and the criteria that it set forth today. Um, I personally really was happy with that. Um, I hope that, um, again, there is an opportunity for the, the community to comment on the project uh, with a little bit of lead time. Um, you know, this, no one in this room got um, even copies of this visual, and there's just not enough detail and no time for the community really to process it and to decide input should be should be so choose. So um, that would be a strong request on at least my part is that um, the commission asks that the applicant in the future um, give give a little bit of detail and and, and uh, the community the ability to review those. Um, 
great as it moves forward. Um, I will leave it at that. I want to thank you all for your the seriousness with which you're taking these deliberations. Thank you. So, is <laughs> there Okay, quick, please. If you could uh, just that name. Um, Chris, yes. name Chris and <laughs> Gadera. I'm in a butter, 14 Gray Street and 446 Main Street, and I live on uh, Strong Street, 219. Um, just, uh, just that I would request uh, if two things. One is that uh, if drawings similar to this are going to be presented, um, I, I'm not sure in my mind that this is anywhere near possibly 4,500 square feet right there scale wise um, and that if they're going to be drawings if they could be it's been asked before from different angles and um, and that they sort of cycle if possible during instead of sitting on one picture that's all I want to request one other question is if um, Bruce could please say something to the effect of the differences between square footage and volumetric mass because I'm not sure that all of us here are clear on that. And I think they're very different, and I think some people might not see that difference. Are they? Well, <laughs> and how, are they? No, how are they, I should say? Well, it's just a, this, there are three dimensions, right? There's the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. The, the x and y-axis are the horizontal axis, and if a building is 20 feet wide by 50 feet long, there's a hundred square feet or a thousand square feet I should say and then volumetrically if you build a 20 foot high building it's obviously far more volumetrically imposing than if you build a five foot high building and I think that's all I'm yeah. saying I don't think it should be taken to be too complicated but my question was just could you have could you keep the square footage in terms of the perimeter and have it be less because when you say mass, volume. it's not clear to me. You, you, volume is now well, clear to me. Volume and mass, let's say, yes. for the purposes of this conversation, yes. are identical words. <coughs> um, we use massing for massing models. We use volumetric yeah, for the okay, inside. So massing, uh, massing but, is volume to you. Yes, they're okay. the same. And, and in this case, it has everything to do with whether there's a gable roof on it or not. Right. Okay. And, and uh, I am, I think, as you've heard me, but I'll, uh, I'll say it again a little differently. I think the, uh, the historic, uh, the appropriateness of this building is improved in aggregate by taking off the gable roof. You lose some of the connection perhaps to the gable roofs of the buildings around, but you gain by reducing the volumetric, the massing presence. And then your job is to make the flat roof look well. And I think that's what architects do, you know? I wouldn't be afraid of doing that, and I know Bill well, and I, I know that he's well and capable of doing that. He just has to be, we have to push him to do it, and if we don't push him to do it, he won't do it, as I've said, because I understand these things, but I wouldn't either. Yeah, so I, I want to say, too, that you know, the local historic district, within appropriateness, is also the square footage. So, you know, to me, I'm not convinced that they can't have a smaller square footage as well as a different massing. So we haven't been shown More the better. or told that there can't be some, I'm not saying it's cut in half, right? But there can be some variation that might work better with a different concept. So, you know, that, so that, so, you know, volume and square foot do go hand in hand in terms of how they play out in a three dimension. Right. But I'm not, you know, I agree that if, you know, if it's cut so much, that it's you know the applicant can't make a building then then you know then that, that's you know that's that's a, a, a problem that we have to encounter at that time but we haven't had that issue yet so we don't know if something if there are small changes that can be made that change the footprint exactly. and the volume um, and when it said that we haven't really told the applicant what we want I mean I think we have but we're not architects so we can't say this is we, we need to we've communicated what our Concern is in terms of size and setback and appropriateness and you know structure, um, and then it's for the I guess the architect or the applicant to present different ideas because that's not we're, we're not architects. Uh, we, we can't tell you exactly what we want. We don't necessarily we, we that's know that's not our role. Right. But I I so what like I'm the, hearing uh, 
the justice who said he doesn't know what pornography is, but he knows <laughs> exactly. it when he sees it. No, we're not like we're that not at that. all, Bruce. But okay. I mean, we I it. wouldn't be the first one to say that because I know that was probably running but through I, everybody's head. What I'm head. hearing is that some members of the commission would like, we want maybe three things. It, can this be modified. Um, modified to meet our uh, our requirements and to be in appropriate to the bylaws? And in addition, could we see some new and different approaches so that, that this we're not just funneled into that, you know, that, that this isn't the whole universe? Mm -hmm. And we could, you know, we, we could give the applicant till December or even after the new year? What? Yeah, I mean, I think so. You know, I think, I think it's what, up to the nobody's applicant. building in the yeah. in the winter. I think what you just said was, you know, can the current design be modified to get an approval, and then you know, different approaches. I mean, if we think that's the way the commission wants to go, then that can be, you know, agreed upon, and then we can try to set a, a, another date. As it's presented to us, but we would be meeting again the first Monday in November. Yeah, I won't. Moto wouldn't. I will be here. Well, um, but I think that's I think soon. That and that's I don't think I'm just saying that that's too yes, soon. Right? And I don't so, think we have any other applications, so we don't have to So that. that it could be the first Monday in December, the first Monday in January, yes, and that that time. would rest with the applicant and the architect. So possibly Mr. Malloy could negotiate with them to see. Well, we have to continue a hearing to a so date, date certain. certain. Date certain. Um, so. Oh. Yes. So to the Spicer, applicant Spicer raised his price. would um hmm. to what they paid for it. would the first yeah. would our regularly scheduled meeting which would be the first Monday in December be enough time or, or would you like till the first our meeting in January the first <clears throat> Monday after sure. the holiday in January December is it, it, it would be it would be all right it would be great if we could expect at that time we would know whether we should produce our construction documents and get ready because even though nobody's building in the winter this is the time when the drawings are done and the bidding is done in January and February construction starts the next month in, in March so uh, this is not a time to sit around and waste time if we're gonna get it done this year or in any year the, um, I mean is like you know at the last week in November better I mean you know if we you know if Thanksgiving it's, it's Thanksgiving yeah. yeah I mean that's the thing that we want if we do want a week in advance I mean if we say we want to meet December 2nd which is a Monday you know we'd want the drawings by November 25th which doesn't you know that gives you really just three See, weeks you're really part of the team at this point um, our team when we do a project it meets weekly 7 30 in the morning every Monday we meet with the St. John's Church and together we we work we work it up it, You've got but to move it to, along. But we have to respond to right. your drawings. We have to respond. We can't. It, we could probably, if we could all go to a cafe and talk to each other, we could make maybe more progress. But we have to do it like this. We also have to post the meeting. And I, I mean, I like Bruce's idea. So we have to say, do we, do we want to give you now the direction? Do you doctor this? Do you just keep working on this? And I want to emphasize that besides that, I would really welcome a whole a concept of, of reducing it, as, as he said. I think there would be, I would be more enthusiastic in going in that direction. That's my well, I think there is agreement that we would like to see, let's say, three things. A, 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 a continue, you know, another iteration of this general concept taking into consideration the suggestions that we have today as well as seeing let's say two dip very different approaches that would yeah. as Bruce had articulated that would and also reflect the same um, criteria but in a, in a different approach so we can see maybe a single story building a flat Right. Mm -hmm. And if you could produce that faster and want us to respond to it faster, I'm open to yeah. Yeah, we could faster. Do that. We could do it as soon as you can. You but can? when you say do it a week before and send it out, we don't just sit around for a week. We continue on. So that's why you see more. Right. Because yes, that's why you came in. We're still working now. on it, still thinking yes. about it. We can't stop. Right. 
Right. <laughs> We're sorry about that, but, but yes. as soon as you can meet, we'd like to meet. But maybe we could do it in a format that then we can have the everybody that's here be able to see it. We'll, we'll be happy we'll to, to invite you into the process and, and show sketches and plans, and, but they won't be uh, a great quality caliber. That's but they fine. would be talking points. Yeah, that's great. fine. I think that's... Because we can't show specific, a specific... Uh, chimney detail, we, and at the same we, time, until be you talking. Have the direction we've agreed that we've that agreed waits that. until we've we take that. a decision. Yes, yes. We've all agreed on that. The most yes. productive. But I think, Bill, you know, I think a big one is having a 3D model that has the ability to have various perspectives with a quick fly around because, you know, like we're seeing here with this static image, it's really hard to say, okay, what's the perspective then of looking up Main Street? What's the perspective from Gray Street? Whereas if it were in a um, you know, some software where you could you could easily maneuver around the model, you could get down to eye level and have a rough perspective of, okay, is this working or not? You know, because I think, you know, you can come up with some great floor plans and some sketches, but really the, if the commission wants to know, okay, what's least impactful for the view or the contextual ele um, element, we really need that that model. And so I, I think in, until we have that, I, I would, I, you know, I would not want to meet again and have, you know, a few images or sketches. I'd really like to have you know, the concepts in a model that we can, you know, have on the screen and we can maneuver around and say, okay, what does it look like again from Triangle Street? Okay, let's look at the next one, you know, just so we can say yes or no. I mean, my hope is that after that, the commission would have consensus about what is appropriate, right? So then we can say, okay, we, we think this is the better approach and we can go that route. Um, we could do it with that information, I'm sure. Yes. I'm not sure we can do it without it. No, we can't. Yeah, I don't sure I think we that's the issue that we, we can't can. do it without it. And we'll be, yeah. So, is, is it fair to say, however, that regardless of whether, uh, regardless of the modifications on this plan and being able to visualize other plans, that fewer parking spaces would move the whole thing eastward and, and be a useful common thread? Through the different designs moves to move it north. Hmm? to move it north to move it north, north. 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 Think, yes, yeah. and I'm, and also the that. one foot berm moved as far east as possible. There are some common threads in our feedback today. Good. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think with the parking, some of it is you know the site design, how that informs the parking. So. You know, I think what we said is we want the building to be have certain setbacks. So now the challenge is well, how do you design the parking to work? So I'm not saying less parking. What I'm hearing is we want the building to be a certain way. Let's make the rest of the site design work. And so I'm not, and that but we mean, don't want the thing moved westward in order to accommodate the more parking. Well, I think yes. that's yeah, that's been said. So I right. just I'm not you know parking at certain dimensions. You do yes. need a certain drive aisle. And so really you know there's different ways to configure parking. I'm not saying we want reduced parking, but if the site design... Well, the goal isn't reduced parking, the goal is setback. Right. Yes. So if the setback does We that, don't want to be told right. that it can't be set back further because of the parking. Right, That's, right, right, yeah. right. But we want the parking to be driving the location right. to go there. Correct. No, right. It's true. Right. So with that, then, we don't close the meeting, but we, we have don't to close set the a meeting. date certain. Yeah, let's set a date. So I guess the question is whether November or December. Well, I think November, uh, December. Well, I heard uh, Mr. Gillen saying ASAP. Yeah, but, but then but let's make sure. Oh, that oh, oh, the posting. Let's the, make sure the, that ASAP included delivering yes. a three-dimensional. Okay, right, good. That's uh, that's in advance. Yeah. In advance. And, well, it doesn't have to be in advance. Well, yes, it does. Do you for, have for the patience? audience? Yeah. For, for the public. public. For the public. I disagree. Oh, yeah. I think if, if he's going to be able to produce a three-dimensional model, the oh, point of the that screen, is that yeah. people could quickly digest it. There would yeah. be no point in sending that out because most people wouldn't, wouldn't have the capacity to be able right. to look okay. at it. Okay. Okay. And they yeah. wouldn't look at it the right way yeah. and they would jump okay. to the wrong okay. conclusions yeah. and Bill would spend the rest of the afternoon disabusing people of all sorts of <laughs> conclusions they jumped to, which would be <laughs> unfortunate. No, I think let's okay. make sure that Bill can get uh, any uh, substan uh, the, the substantial differential, uh, you know, the different massing studies done um, with three-dimensional modeling to support them, good. and then just bring it and we'll be ready. Good, good, so, good. Whatever that so date is. Tell, yeah, someone tell me a date. <laughs> uh, we were talking about um, first, I'm sorry. The 
first Monday. Monday so, in December, which is December 2nd. So is not that, a, what is, what? I have, yeah. Yeah, does that I push off too late? I mean, do you want to save it in November? Case we not, it. So just leave it still? I don't think do we're going to need it. Do you want it in November, then? Uh, all those I'll back, I'll uh, travel backwards on that, because uh, I have never done what Bruce says is so easy to do. So I don't know what I'm walking into. I may be calling Netherlands again or somewhere no, no, no. to figure out how to do to do that. But if, if it's easy as Bruce indicates, yeah, I'll have it in no November, but I doubt it. I think we should look at this. Let's December. continue to Monday, November, uh, December 2nd. And, you know, so we could try to make it a week earlier with the holiday. I mean, I don't want to just be pushing ourselves to no end. So if we say the second, we can always continue it. We can always continue it again, right? We don't have to do anything on that date. But if we think the second is good and we can make it work, Bill will be ready now. Bill will be ready. Let's just set that as a date. As I'd a like date to keep that time? because yeah. it's our standard meeting time. Yeah. Think, and we've arranged our and it's after the holiday. It. I think if we do it, I mean, to do it the Monday of Thanksgiving is... Right. What time? You? What? Is that 340? What? What? At 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock here? No. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll be because you're on the board. Say Monday, December 2nd at 4. 4, yeah. We'll, 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 we'll let, let us know. Yet. Yeah. Okay. 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 Maybe we'll let us know. Okay. Okay. So then we don't close the meeting. We don't close the meeting. We, yeah. we, yeah. yeah. we move to continue. We move to continue. We move to continue. Move to continue. To date certain. To the date. To Monday, December 2nd at 4 p.m. Yes. Place to be determined. So, so is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. And I'm Passed. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.